Welcome back. We're now going to do a, an example of how we might use MI in a case management situation. And we're going to try to do the whole arc of focus. So I'm going to be talking with Danny. Imagine we're in a homeless shelter and it'll be a pretty short exchange. We're going to try to do maybe a little bit of small talk, get to some goals, the what land, move into some motivation, and then maybe begin to problem solve and then kind of wrap it up. So we're going to try to do that in a fairly abbreviated way. So we're going to start with the fact that I know you, and I'm just doing that first introduction to say, so we're, we're starting now. So, hi Danny, um, good to see you today. Hey. I'm glad we are able to connect for a few minutes. I'm curious, yeah. like, how's your, how's your day been? It's okay. I missed breakfast this morning, so that was not great, um, but I did get a snack. Ah, mm -hmm. hey, when I missed breakfast, that's, I know. that's rough. I know. Glad you got the snack, though. Thanks. Yeah, goldfish is my favorite. Yeah, it can be good. Hey, just so we have a few minutes here, would you mind if we just kind of focused in real quick on kind of how to help you move forward with your, your case plan? Yeah, um, the reason I came in today is because my probation officer, I met with him yesterday and I have to go, I was in drug court and I have to go into substance treatment or um, a treatment facility. I was thinking about going, I was thinking about going to the one on 3rd South because I heard really good things about that one. Yeah. So one of the ideas we might talk about is this idea of getting you into drug court. So mm -hmm, that's one mm -hmm. thing we could work on. Is there something else you might want to work on? I lost my ID yesterday too, so yeah, I think I'm gonna need to do that. So those are the two things we can maybe work on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So notice we've done a little bit of small talk, and then because we could talk forever about goldfish and missing breakfast, I'm trying to focus our time. And so there was a, a question say, hey, since we, have, we don't have a lot of time, can we focus on your goals today? And Danny jumped right in. So that permission question, if she says yes, we're trying to lower resistance and promote engagement. So real simple skill. We're just trying to fold in. Okay, so now we've got two goals. So now what I'm going to try to do is prioritize those. So I'm going to say, hey, Danny, of those two things, like finding your ID and getting to, you know, following with the drug court's recommendations, which do you think is most important for you at this time? Now, notice what we're doing there. We're transitioning and prioritizing. And I'm not taking responsibility for Danny's goals. Like if I were to say, hey, you got to work on getting that ID because if you don't have an ID, what else could you do? Then it becomes my goal and it might jack up your resistance. So, Danny, of those two, uh, following through with the drug court recommendations or the ID, which do you feel is most important for you at this moment? Well, I always lose my ID, so it, you, got, you have a copy anyway. And uh, I didn't tell you about the drug court for a while, so I have to get into treatment in the next two days. Ah, so there's a little bit of a press yeah. getting on with the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot to tell you about it, but yeah, I told you now. That's right. So here we are. So let's talk about that for a second. So I'm curious, before we talk about how you might kind of move forward and kind of following through with treatment, I want to hear a little bit about why it's important for you to do at this moment. So what are the top two or three reasons you think it's important to follow through with the, the, the treatment for your... Well, I go to jail if I don't, so that's mm -hmm. kind of... Pressing for you don't me, want to go to say. jail. No, no, no. Um, but also, I've been thinking that I do kind of want to get clean. I've been I've been down here for a while, so I'm thinking I don't know. Maybe I can get clean and get into housing. All right. So those are some important goals for you. Mm -hmm. This idea of not being in jail, and that you'd like to be clean for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is it might help you get into housing. So I'm curious, like. Like, just imagine this. Like, let's say, what would be, if you were able to get clean, what do you imagine would go well in your life? Like, what would you want after getting clean? I really want my kids back. They're still with, still mm -hmm. with uh, their mom, but yeah, I'm trying to get a two bedroom so I can get, so I can get both my kids back. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're doing here is we're spending some time in Y land or that green talk or change talk. I might want to jump in really quickly and start giving Danny ideas about how she can follow through with drug court. But the goal is that right now Danny's hearing the change, like she's offering the change talk. My job is to put out the dots and her job is to connect those dots. And so I'm just going to do elicit, provide elicit and gently explore some of her motivation around uh, following through with treatment. And then when I reflect it, so Danny hears it once out of her mouth and into her ears. And then when I reflect it and she says, yes, that's right, then it becomes hers yet again. And so that's the idea of pulling ideas from Danny and then reflecting those so that she gets multiple passes with the change talk. So I'm going to play with that for a little bit more and then at some point I'm going to try to transition into Howland. Let's see if it works. 
So Danny, you mentioned you want to get your kids back and that's connected to your drug treatment. That sounds really important. Yeah, well, they told me I can't get my kids back unless I get into housing and yeah, it's not been going to the, yeah, I just spend all my money on drugs and I can never make a housing appointment. So maybe going into treatment is going to be good for me. Managing your drugs through treatment might really help you take that next step with housing and ultimately getting your kids back. Yeah. So I'm curious, on a scale of zero to 10, like where would you put your motivation to uh, achieve? It's a 10. It's a 10 and not a five because? I definitely want to get my kids back. I just think this is, this is going to be the time. It's really about getting your kids back for you. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned a couple things. So before, maybe we can start talking about how you can succeed in treatment. And I'm wondering, is, is it enough for you to think, okay, I want my kids back. I want secure housing. I don't want to go to jail. I want to experience being clean again. Is that enough for us to actually talk about some specific ideas that you could take to be successful in treatment? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you this then. So now we're in how land. And I'm going to do a list of provide a list of about what Danny already knows before jumping in and providing ideas. So Danny, what do you already know about being successful in something like you know treatment for drug and alcohol? Like, what, what what do you already know will help you be successful? Well, I did do treatment like a year ago, and I was doing really good for the first few months. Um, but then I got off my Suboxone, and yeah, yeah, I went downhill from there. Okay, so you know that you can do it. You've been yeah. You had a few moments of sobriety there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so for you, when you were doing better, what were you telling yourself? Like, what were some of the things you told yourself to help you be successful? Oh, so good. Um, I was writing letters to my daughter and I was feeling good. I got up in the morning and I was working out and yeah, my support system was so good. I really liked my therapist yeah. at that time. You even light up when you talk about it. Yes. Yeah. Great time of my life. Yeah. It was a good time of your life. You were writing letters. You had a therapist that you connected with that was helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I just forgot. You were also... I was writing letters to my daughter. You were writing letters yeah. to your daughter. I forgot that. Mm -hmm. so, so those are some things that we can maybe think about doing now to help you be successful. Mm -hmm. I'm also curious, like, when you, when you went off treatment and you mm -hmm. said you went off the Suboxone, like, yeah. what are the enemies to success for you? Like, what things do you probably need to avoid so that you can be successful? Uh, yeah, I gotta keep to myself more, like when I start, when I started getting passes to leave, um, I started hanging out with the same crowd that I used to, um, and yeah, once, once you start, it just, it's a downhill from there. So for you, it might really be about that kind of commitment, and, and maybe not hanging out with the same people, because that can yeah. kind of lead you down the wrong path. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So what other ideas do you have about how you can be successful in treatment at this point? Uh, you know, I just feel like I got to get there. Maybe I can just go today. If I just go right now and I'm feeling it, like that might be good for me. Just starting. Helps. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let me do this. So I'm going to slow down here and just kind of wrap it up here. So what we've done in this time, we've been about eight minutes, is we've kind of did a little bit of small talk, not a ton, assuming we have a relationship, got to some goals, prioritized one of them, explored a little bit of the motivation that Danny has, and jumped into some of Danny's ideas about how. Now the work's not over, right? Like we would still want to stay involved in maybe making that link to treatment. It might be about transportation. You know, it might be about what are the treatment options available to you and then what we can do to support you. And so we kind of do that in the wrap up. So let me ask you this. You're in the real world. You're, you're on the front lines. Uh, All right. What, how would you evaluate this uh, interaction from an MI perspective? What was helpful, what was not helpful? And you can say yeah. anything you yeah. want. I think it's great. I think a lot of times case managers get so wrapped up in it. They're like, okay, wow, we got to get this person into treatment um, and not even kind of take their consideration. They can just be like, blah, 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 treatment center has openings right now. And then just kind of get them there. Um, but listening and just sitting down and really hearing their needs, their wants, and what is worked or not, I think it's such a crucial step. Yep. So can for us as workers then, the gravity to get into that how land and just start mm -hmm. telling them what to do or kind of doing the case management for them. We might be pulled toward that, mm -hmm. but that's mm -hmm. problematic because why do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's not, I would always say like, I'm not going to put someone in a house if they don't want it, right? I'm not going right. to put someone in a treatment center they don't want, they're probably going to fail. Right. So to really listen to their needs and listen, like maybe we can wait a week to get you into the treatment center you right. actually want to get into, um, it's going to really help them in the long run. Yep. 
I agree. I, I see that a lot, that we want to all be kind of right in the how land, and mm -hmm. we don't take that time mm -hmm. to slow down and listen to mm -hmm. what they think is best, including on their own steps. Yeah. Any other feedback you'd have for uh, that kind of high-level overview of motivational interviewing? Um, no, I thought it was great. All right. Well, thank you, Danny. <laughs> you good with it? Yeah. All right.